I think it's time. What up? It's Adam Odes. Welcome back. Yes, back to <laughs> the next episode of whatever the hell this is called. The uh, I know I call it. Wait, what did I call it? The Nerd Rage uh, Podcast, something like that. But uh, okay, you guys know I don't. It's sad, isn't it? All right, so. I only got two topics today because I think the last one's going to take a long time to get through. And really the first one hit me uh, hit me at the heart because it's what I deal with. So, uh, like always, I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, this first one here, if you can tell what that is, it's guy reading magazines because the topic is that uh, these publications now, the gaming publications, they're losing steam. They're gone. They're, start, they're dying off. And uh, someone who took, I actually took classes. I was uh, in journalism in high school. I wrote for the paper. <laughs> I did the entertainment section. So I did, you know, music, games, the movies that were out. And then I ended up in college taking creative writing courses. Um, <clears throat> I wrote for The Flash, which was an online publication for the Kent State University here in Ohio. Um, I've since then tried to write scripts and try, I'm trying to get into like the comedy world, I'm trying to be a script writer and stuff like that. So, you know, writing hits me at the heart, you know, it's something that I've put a lot of uh, effort and my time into, uh, it's something I thoroughly enjoy doing, and what better to write about video games, right? Um, I always thought about doing that, and ever since I got this magazine, you guys might recognize this magazine, good old Nintendo Power, I used to get this as a kid, and I would read it from cover to cover multiple times, to this day, I bring these out and I still read them, uh, I remember, see, like, I still got, like, the cards, dude, you know, you, it would come with cards, it would come with posters, I think this one's still got the poster in it, heck yeah, dude, it's, it's still got the, the Roadrunner Death Valley poster in it, you know, this is the Mario Kart edition, but, um, this was like the best magazine ever, and I remember as a kid, I would just get this, and I couldn't wait for it, I couldn't wait to see like what their their polls were, you know, they used to do like, you know, next issue of what's coming out, our pack watch, you know, games that are coming out now, the top 20s, you know, like this shit was awesome, well, they don't exist anymore, if they do, and I'm, you know, sure, there's some that do, but not a lot of people are subscribing to them, you know, or let alone even buying them, and... I think the reason is, well, I got three reasons here. The first one is money. The money is just not there, and it's because of technology. It's because of like what what we're doing right now. Uh, it's about online publications. It's uh, Facebook, you know, groups that you can subscribe to that they put it on your newsfeed. You know, Twitters that you can follow about updates. You know, podcasts like this and other ones like the CU podcast is one of my favorite. Shout out to Kathy Nes Punk and my boy Ian. Um, so, a lot of these uh, publications are going down because of this, and it sucks. It absolutely sucks. Uh, it's being as a writer because there's something to writing that you just can't get with, you know, 130 some characters on Twitter, or uh, enough to keep a, a person's interest in, in an article. Because most people who are using technology, it's like on a bus, on the way to work, or you know, like they're they're sitting on the shitter, you know squeezing one out and they're reading something so they don't have that kind of time to go through you know like a magazine anymore uh it's just that's just the way our society works now you know this is that we haven't allotted that kind of time to reading so you would think okay that's a good thing but it's not because you miss out on a lot of details a lot of information a lot of just the overall uh i guess the fluidity of the article like when you read a book it slowly progresses you know, you don't just jump straight to the climax and then end it. So there's a progression to it, and that progression sets up the storyline, sets up the characters, sets up everything, right? Well, that's how it was with these articles here too. You would you would read about the game, you'd learn about like a little bit about it. You know, you would hear from the the people who made the game, and it just all it it made this overall picture that just doesn't exist anymore. Now it's just <laughs> let's cut to the chase. Let's use pictures and videos from YouTube and just knock it out. Now, granted, there are a lot of really cool online publications. I won't get into the names and all that. I'm sure you guys know them anyway. But even those are slowly starting to die. I think uh, what was the? I think Game Trailers was the last one that just bit the dust because they're all getting bought up by these other companies because they're just falling. They, they're, they're cutting people everywhere. They can't afford it. No one cares to read these online publications anymore. And it's all because of the money. And the technology is what ruined that. So the other one is that. Um, Bias opinions rule the media now. 
I think that's a huge thing that's going on right now is that you would get you get these people <laughs> again I won't mention names or publications but you could people who follow these publications also I'll just throw one out there as an example like Kotaku there are people at Kotaku that write consistently and there's people that follow certain writers on Kotaku but well, they know those opinions just like you guys follow my channel you know my opinions and you can kind of guess where I'm gonna stand on certain issues the only problem with that is when you're in a publication you're supposed to be unbiased you're so you can add your opinions but you're supposed to have a full hundred percent round view above the topic at hand and this is slowly fading away people are just only going to their opinions they're only going to this the most recent one is for the game cuphead there was a guy who just sucked at video games completely sucks just sucks 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 he couldn't pass whatever it was and he said this game sucks it's way too damn hard and everyone laughed at him no one no one will admit that the game's easy but everyone got past what he tried to do and this guy should not have been playing the game it's because he had a biased opinion in the sense that he didn't know video games so he wasn't in the right like he just isn't the right guy to do it and his opinion then was based on exactly what he was playing which some of you are gonna say well that's an unbiased opinion and it truly is but at the same time it's someone who shouldn't have been there and it's only because these people only care about the next article and that's kind of where I'm going with that is you used to have people write about certain things like I did entertainment on my uh, school journal because that's what I was good at the, the teacher recognized that I knew entertainment I was a musician I played video games you know I was into all this stuff so that's the guy to put there he didn't she didn't put me in the business I didn't know shit about business I didn't care or like what was going on at the school I didn't care so they didn't put me there it's called aces in their places and that's what a lot of these uh, publications now are just doing they're just putting anyone on anything like here here's your next assignment here's the next assignment who wants it oh you're free here's the next one and they're just passing them out and that that hurts it hurts the article it hurts the, the publicist company like it just hurts everyone even but most of all it hurts us the people reading it because if we had all read that cuphead sucks it wouldn't be anything that you see right now and it's blowing up because people realized on their own that cuphead doesn't suck beyond the article and that shouldn't happen it just shouldn't happen if you have someone who's unbiased they should go in there the free mind and see it for what it is and go this is pretty cool even though i can't play it it's still pretty goddamn cool because see that's an unbiased opinion a lot of times that um like okay for example majora's mask absolutely hate majora's mask hate it the game bothers me to no end fucking hate it most redundant game i've ever played let's play through 10 15 minutes of gameplay just to go back to something i wanted to do before okay i'm not going to go any further more into it but i understand how awesome of a game is the game is sweet you know it's it's literally the second ocarina of time it's great it is a perfect sequel the gameplay is flawless the level design amazing storyline excellent like i i i would still rate the game in the 90s out of 100 it is fan fucking tastic game do i like it absolutely not i will never play it again i hate the game fuck it right but as a journalist i have to go by something not in my opinion i didn't like it but that doesn't change the game the game is still a game kind of like if i had a, if i had a hole this big and i gave you a, a tiny p to throw through it you'd be like okay that's easy you're gonna find someone who has no eye hand coordination and they're gonna miss a lot now does that mean that i gave you a fair chance to throw a p inside of a hole this big yes did that second person suck at it yes so does that mean that according to the second person that my game was not fair no and that's how uh, we, these publications that even still exist they need to start learning unbiased opinions like all the time i see articles about games that haven't even fucking came out yet that is one of my biggest pet peeves like how are you saying this is awesome how are you rating a game that isn't developed yet and you see it all the time and the other thing is that these uh, opinions of these things happen instantly. Like the second they hear something happening, they're like, we gotta write an article, we gotta get it out today. It just broke the news. They have no idea what's happening. They don't do their research. They don't make sure that their facts are checked. They just go, pump this shit out, here it is. And that is terrible. It creates rumors, it creates uh, false opinions. It's just, it's bad. And that is what's ruining what's left of these online publications, which 
which is why shit like this was so good. Because the because this magazine, for example, knew that they had to get their shit straight. They had to get their facts right because they are printing something and sending it to people. This had to be 100% accurate. Anymore, they just don't care because you can just delete it. Imagine if, if you were holding this magazine, reading it, and all of a sudden it just went, it just disappeared. You'd be like, oh, what the hell? And then a new one appeared the next day, and you're like, oh, shit, okay. But that's essentially what's happening online now. They'll just delete articles. They'll, they'll uh, edit previous articles saying, you know, uh, update or whatever. Like, no, 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 don't fucking post it. If you don't know what you're posting, don't fucking post it. That's journalism. What we're seeing in... In, this, in, uh, in the web, web now is just bullshit. We're just seeing a bunch of idiots who don't know what they're doing, they're not real journalists, and they're just pumping out bullshit for the masses in hopes that they get your click. And that's what's ruining true good publications now, is the fact that they can get it out fast and no one gives a shit. And it comes back to us, it comes to us following these people, uh, or uh, sharing those articles, uh, keeping those rumors going until otherwise, you know, and it's got to stop, or this, it's just going to keep getting worse, and then my second one is that, I'm sorry, my third uh, reason why I think gun publications are going down is because it's just so goddamn easy to do it, and it's completely oversaturated, to put out something like this takes a lot of time, a lot of work, physical materials, machines to print, and money, it costs money, this costs a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of materials, okay, well, well, how hard is it to do what I'm doing right now? I mean, I got the equipment, I record it, boom, who gives a shit, right? It's easy, it's quick, it's cheap, boom, throw it out there. And everyone is doing it now. Everyone. Everyone? Everyone is doing it now. And it's stupid, it's stupid. And I, see, I know how hypocritical, right? I'm sitting here talking to you about this. But, see, that's the difference between maybe my channel and someone else's. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to tell you if it's fucked up or not. Someone, but see, that's my point then, is with the other ones, the money, the bias, opinions, and just it's easy to do. So now you got a bunch of people who just are going to tell you what what is popular, what you want to hear. So you sub to their channel. Come to me for, you know, the, the latest news and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I might not be truthful because I'm just going to repeat what I found on Kotaku. You know, like these, it's just so easy, so oversaturated. Everyone's doing it that it's hard to tell. Who's the, who's the real deal? Whose opinions should you trust? Who is even giving you opinions or facts to begin with? You know, I personally look into the shit that I do. Anytime I give you guys advice, or I give you guys uh, what I would consider facts or just anything, it's not from something that I just popped out of my head. Obviously, if I say like something like Majora's Mask sucks, that's my opinion, but it's based on facts. I, if I put in my game, you'll see I have three games saved that I've beaten the game all three times. I've gone through it. I don't have an unbiased opinion. I have my, or I have an unbiased opinion in the sense that I play through it. I fact check that shit. Anything that I've said to you guys right now, I have looked up and I've made sure that it exists so that you guys know that anything I'm telling you is what's out there and what I have found. It's not me just rambling and spitting out bullshit. Well, with this oversaturation, you're getting the full spectrum. Yes, you, there are uh, people that really fact check their shit. They really know what they're talking about. But if you, okay, if it started with five people, they're in competition with each other, okay? So they want to make sure that their shit is legit. Okay, but now there's 10 people. Okay, so like maybe the 10th person's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to do my own thing. Now there's 20 people. And you got about four of them saying, you know what? I like that one guy. I'm going to go against the grain and just talk about bullshit. Then it goes to 50 people, then 100, then 10,000 different podcasts and channels and blogs, all telling you the same thing. Like they'll go, oh, okay, this is about Cuphead. But... How do you know who's telling the truth? You just don't. Because even if someone is telling like a lie, like they just made up something, there might be someone else saying it already. And now all of a sudden people go, well, that guy's saying it. And that guy's saying it. It must be true. And that's the problem with this. Is this oversaturation because it's so easy to do. People are spreading false everything false everything just like bullshit and lies and just rumors and just it's just going on and on and that's what's killing these publications because people like that shit you know like people like sorry i dropped drop the mouse there but uh people like controversy 
you know, they like drama. So they want people to lie. And that's who they follow. Think of all the people like, okay, Leafy is here. Love him. He's my boy. But they follow this guy because he creates drama. Drama's there. You know, what's going to happen next? Or Keemstar, that fucking asshole. Uh, yeah, he. people follow him, though, because he's a fucking asshole. But see, these are the people who get the views, who get the subs, because it's controversy, it's drama, it's against the grain. And the only reason we like that is because it's, I won't go into the science too far, but it's embedded in our brain, our cortex, you know, the, the, everything that spews out of there, all the shit that mixes together and forms opinions and feelings and emotions. We as humans focus on the negative because it's a defense mechanism. We go, oh, wait, what is that? I don't know what that is. Okay, defense. And we do that with drama for the same reason. We're like, oh, hey, what's going to happen next? Because our brain wants that information to defend ourselves against so it's really easy to fall prey to that and the more saturation you have with any topic the more drama and the more stuff that's going to be created of it because it's you can't like it's easy for five people to produce the same information it's really hard for 10,000 people to produce all the same information so you're going to have different ideas different things flowing like this one person out of 10,000 might say something you know it's different but then like this group of a hundred are saying this same thing this group of like 2,000 are saying this same thing and then the other 8,000 are saying what's right but there's a good chunk that's not so uh you it just it's it sucks it sucks that this is what's happening you know you got the money that's not there because it's just not there no one's giving money to these things no one's advertising so the money's not there for these publications uh the biased opinions are destroying it because you can get away with changing it you know so that's why i said biased opinions are destroying it because no one is reprimanded for their work and they can say whatever they want and then take it back apologize or they can Update it, shit, edit, it you know, like you can just be changed. But no, 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 you know, like you, this, this is out, this is out, this is it. There's physical evidence of your bullshit. No, that doesn't exist anymore. So that's what's killing those. And the, the oversaturation. Too many damn people are doing it because it's so easy. You can do it with your phone now. There's, there's times where I'll get on um, website like Facebook Live. You can Facebook Live yourself and do exactly what I'm doing. And you can have a whole site on Facebook just going, hey, what's up, guys? I'm talking about this bullshit. And it's it's that easy. It's, it's in our pockets, the ability to do this. So this oversaturation is destroying all of it. And it sucks, man. It sucks. One of my favorite things is I love getting these at night. I do this at night all the time. I'll get one of these Nintendo Powers out. I've probably read through them a thousand times. But like, I'll read these little comics about, you know, Legend of Zelda. You know, I'll, I'll like, oh, Tom and Jerry. I'm like, oh, I remember this game. And everyone's like always asks me as I'm streaming, how do you know these things about these games? A lot of it comes from this. Yeah, I'll just flip through these and like even Mario Kart. You think you know everything about Mario Kart? But see, they have a plain tip. It's right there. It's called plain tip. You know, you read this shit and it's just fun. It's fun to look at the pictures. It's fun to hold it. It's fun to just go, wow, okay. But this this whole thing where you just click and read something and swipe it and go, you know, it's like there's just no there's no love there. That the feeling's gone and it's sad. It really is sad. If it, if I could, I would I would reopen something like Nintendo Power. I would you know I would go beyond Nintendo. But I just think it would be really cool to have a publication. So if anyone's out there and is trying to start a project with this, please get a hold of me. Pass it around. I am great at doing this. I have the ability. I have the means necessary, and I have the drive to do it if you guys know of anyone that's doing anything like this please let me know because i would love to put out a physical publication of like video games a mix of like retro and new and just everything that's going on in the world Pretty, essentially a podcast of just nerd stuff let's just have a fun magazine and get it out there and bring it back bring back actual honest journalism unbiased opinions you know who cares about it for uh, just making enough to pass the magazine let's just do something let's make a change let's go back to something that's trusted, something that when you hold this, you know what's in your hands is what's real, because that is slowly dying, unfortunately. So, okay, next topic, last topic, because this one's going to take a minute, but I think you guys will like it. You guys know me, Super Nintendo, Mini NES, SNES came out, alright, so I'm going to 
go through the list of games like I did with the NES Classic. Um, but I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go in order. Uh, they have them in alphabetical order. These are the ones that are on all of them. Obviously, there's different regions, different games. So we're going to do the ones here in the United States. I'll even go over the games that are in the European, Japanese region, whatever. <laughs> but here in the U.S., we got a set list of games. And I want to give my opinions on them, tell you a little bit about them, you know, that whole ordeal. We'll just knock them out one by one. And then I'll give you an overall opinion that I think about what's going on. Okay, so first off, we got Contra 3 Alien Wars. <laughs> great game, but that's another one that's like Majora's Mask for me, where it's a great game. I would rate it really high, but I fucking hate it. It's way too goddamn hard, and the co-op is just insanely stupid. Like, there's just too many little, like, even the first level where you have to, like, run across that wire and the little things are coming up. Like, it's so hard to not push each other into these. It's just, it's chaos. It's fucking chaos. I'm not a big fan. Give me original Contra any day. But, obviously original Contra is on the NES, for, so for Super NES, Contra 3 Alien Wars, great Konami game, two player action, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. A lot of people will like it, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Okay, next one's Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> Holy shit. For you guys, you know, uh, well for those who don't know my channel and know me, um, I've been playing these games since I was a little kid. Da -da -da -da. Um, I actually entered tournaments as a kid as well. My parents were actually very uh, supportive in me playing video games. And I entered a tournament for Blockbuster, and I won some Pogs. Do you guys remember Pogs? In fact, I might even still have them. Uh, I don't even know what just happened there. But here's my little box of Pogs. You guys might remember these. They're like little milk caps. And uh, I actually won some of these at a Blockbuster tournament for playing Donkey Kong Country. And it was fucking amazing. Um, I won first place. I got some pogs. I got some, in fact, there's one right now. There it is. A little Diddy Kong pog. Um, and they had all the Donkey Kong country things. And I won this tournament. I got those. I got some Marvel DC cards. You know, the little Fleer Ultra cards, you know, used to collect. I still have all of them. I have, like, the entire set of all the Fleer Marvel cards. But anyways, off topic. I won a, I won a tournament playing this game. I fucking love it. Uh, it's, it's a staple when people actually come over here and play with me. You know, we'll pop it in. Love the game. Ah, here it is actually. Watch this. My boys. My boys. This is a great game. This is probably one of the best games on the system. It's so awesome that they dropped it on this mini NES. I think this is one of the top three games on there you will get the most play of. Maybe not like my favorite three, but it, you'll get the most play out of this, especially co-op. Fucking amazing game. Two thumbs up on that one. Okay, so Final Fantasy VI. Oh, shit. So this is also Final Fantasy III to us in America. <laughs> this is a great game. This is probably... I'm just, okay, I'll, I'll say the original Final Fantasy is my favorite. You guys know me and my boys, the Red Mage. But for Super Nintendo... This was the, by far, hands down, the best game. I think anyone who knows the series will tell you that this is the best one. Not saying that, like, uh, 3, 4, 5 were bad, but it's just something about 6. You know, there's something about it that I think we all can agree on that you can't really, def you can't really pick it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just go, this is exactly why I like this game. And there, you can come up with reasons, but there's just something about it. Just the, the feel, the all-around feel, the storyline, the graphics, the way this, you know, like the gra this, the Mode 7 stuff that they have going in. It's just such a nostalgic, fun feeling. And the gameplay is absolutely goddamn perfect. So yes, <laughs> thumbs up on Final Fantasy 6 or 3, whatever you want to call it. Not to mention, cool for putting an RPG in there. Because there are people that love these games still. I know nowadays the RPG realm, because people don't want, don't have time, they, they want checkpoints and headshots. No, there's still us fans of RPGs out there, and God bless you Nintendo for putting one on this SNES Mini, because that is a shout out to us true you know, RPG fans that still exist. Love it. Okay, F-Zero. Holy shit, F-Zero. One of my all time favorite games ever created. Yes, ever created. Dude, I fucking love F-Zero. The, the soundtrack is amazing. The gameplay is perfect. The controls are flawless. Everything about that game, 10 out of 10, all across the board, 100%, 10 out of 10, one of the best games ever made, one of the, by far one of the best games ever made on the system, except for co-op. It needed a co-op. 
I understand why they didn't. You know, that would have been pushing the hardware pretty hard. But if so, but they made an Excite Bike co-op over in Famicom. So I think someone nowadays, if you guys are out there and you're listening, someone out there, please make a co-op version of the original F-Zero. That would be fucking fantastic. But, I mean, like, I can't give enough thumbs up. We'll give a thousand thumbs up to F-Zero. Probably gonna be one of the best games on this, okay? Moving on. Kirby Superstar. <laughs> it's Kirby. I don't have to go too far into it. It's Kirby. It's a great game. They introduced some new weapons. Fun game. Uh, I, thumbs up. So far, we're, we're thumbs up all the way. Uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Do I even need to go into this? My favorite game of all times ever created. Number one throughout any system. Link to the Past. I don't care. You can call me whatever the fucking you want. Just the names go out there like, oh, you, everyone likes that game. You're just a person. Fuck y'all. It's a great game. That's why everyone likes it. So shut the fuck up. It's a great game. We all love it. If you just want to be the little piss poor guy that goes, yeah, I don't like this game because everyone likes it, then fuck yourself because you're missing out on one of the best games ever. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, a million thumbs up. Best game on there, without even looking on the list, because it's the best game ever created. Baya, Link to the Past, you win. Fucking a million thumbs up. Okay, so the next one, Mega Man X. You all know that I love this game. Uh, if you aren't familiar with my channel, please check out my YouTube down below. You see the link. Um, you're obviously probably watching this on my YouTube. I did a Mega Man X challenge where I did the 100% uh, speed run, everything, even the Hadouken that people don't know about. The game's freaking amazing. I'm not even going to say more about it. Thumbs up all the way. Okay, Secret of Mana. Holy shit, Secret of Mana? Like, who? Secret of Mana? I'm surprised that that's on there. Not because it's a bad game. No, I, I love Secret of Mana. That is probably one of the best games. I mean, dude, it's, it's Secret of Mana. <laughs> Fucking awesome, you know? Uh, so, I'm just surprised that that one's on there. Only because it just wasn't like... Like, it's popular now. See, there's a difference between popular now and popular then. Back then, not a lot of people knew about that game. Uh, it, I mean, it was talked about, but like Final Fantasy kind of ruled, Legend of Zelda kind of ruled, you know, like over overseas Lufia kind of ruled. Like, so games like Secret of Mana was just kind of like swept under the rug, you know? Like, people liked it. Like, no one ever disliked it, but... It's just kind of weird that, like, that one of all the other RPGs there for the, the system kind of made the list. But I'm glad it Saturday, did. It's October actually one of the best RPGs in there for, like, casual the RPG players. Because it, it's not like Mystic Quest, but it, it's, it's, it's in a sense it is. Like, it, you know, you only have, like, one weapon that you worry about. You don't worry about armor. You don't really have stat points, you know. Uh, like, your weapons do, but it's only one stat point. You know, how much damage? So it's a very basic rundown of the RPG uh, setup. And I think it's a great addition to there. I think it might actually get people into playing more there. RPGs. So we'll see. So thumbs up for that. Star Fox and Star Fox 2. I'm going to throw them both together because they're amazing. Uh, they really show off the Mode 7 stuff. Uh, and I'm one of those guys that like I don't care about the graphics. Obviously I play retro games. I go about the gameplay and the gameplay in Star Fox has always been solid. Even Star Fox 64 is one of my favorite games of all time. So it's just it's a great series. First game, awesome. Second game, which um, I'm sure most of you know, but for those who don't was never released. It was made, it's a full game, but they never made it a cartridge that you can go out and buy here in America. So this is really cool. This is really cool, because this is our first legal time that we can actually play the game. You know, Nintendo has given us Star Fox 2 for the first time ever. Believe it or not, even though it's like 20 years old, this is the first time we've had our hands on an actual copy of Star Fox 2 that we have purchased by Nintendo. So this is really freaking cool. Um, I've got to play, I think it was like 10-15 minutes of it, I got the first couple levels down. I own the game, I actually have a version of it, I, I spent a lot of money on the actual physical copy that someone made as a repro, but it's, it's hard, it's hard, it's different. It actually introduced new styles, and I think maybe that's why they saved the game for Star Fox 64, just because they tried so many new things, so many, you know, new machines, it's not just the, the R-Wing, it's, they, they get into the different modes, you know, and it's really cool, it has like this sandbox feel and everything, it's a really neat game, for you uh, true fans out there, it's, a, it's a, sh a shit of a challenge though, holy crap, I couldn't figure it out for the most part, but I didn't put that much time into it either, so, unbiased opinion, you know, it was a great game, I had troubles with it, but I, again, if I went back to it, I'd probably love it just as much as the first one. So thumbs up to both of those games. Hell yeah. Uh, we have Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Fuck those games. I hate them. They're too damn hard. They're not fun. Like, 
this is the thing I never got about any of these games. Okay, well, okay, we'll say Super Ghouls and Ghosts is by far the better than the, the, the Nintendo bastard cousin, whatever, smaller brother, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I hate that game. I hate that game with a flying fucking passion. It is way too goddamn hard. The gameplay is just like every other run like it's not that good. I never got this game. I call it the Donnie Darko syndrome. Where the game is where you know Donnie Darko is okay at best, but everyone thought it was the most amazing thing and it's like a cult classic and it's oh no, it's an okay movie that people think it's cooler than it really is, and they think it's cooler to say they like it. So I think that's how this series goes. I mean, yeah, it's fun. You know, that platforming Mega Man style, it's fun as shit. I understand that. But when it's that goddamn hard, it takes it away. There's other games that you can play that have the same platforming style. Mega Man X, there you go. You know, Contra, there you go. Screw that game. I mean, I understand why they put it on there. Again, the Donnie Darko syndrome. They put it on there because people like it. Because they like to say that they like it. No, the game sucks. Fuck it. No, way too goddamn hard. Fuck you all. I'm not putting any time into that game. No. Alright, so Super Mario Kart. Hey, how about that? Super Mario Go! Yeah! Dude, Super Mario Kart was the shit. And still is the shit. I love that game. Uh, the original's weird, because a lot of people remember the 64 version first, you know. But us old farts grew up with the Super Nintendo one. And the 64 one blew our goddamn minds. We're like, oh god, this is crazy. But no, it started with Mario Kart. Because we were used to, you know, like the Nintendo games where the full track is on the screen and you just see one little pixel go. All of a sudden, now, this had sort of a 3D view to that. It was still the same, like, one screen thing. You were just, like, third person behind the car instead of in the top-down view. And it was pretty amazing. And it blew our minds. We get to play as our favorite characters in Mario. You know, all these tracks were good. The soundtrack was okay. You know, not too memorable, but it was good. Uh, just the gameplay was solid. It was fun. It was quick. Co-op. Amazing game. Thumbs up. Definitely should have been on there, and I'm glad it was. <laughs> okay, so now it looks like we got... Oh, Mario RPG. That is probably my favorite RPG. I know I said Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, but I don't consider Zelda's RPGs. I don't really consider it role playing. You're not you're playing as Link, but you're not like developing Link. You're getting new items, but you're not like leveling them up. You're not, you know what I'm saying? Like the, our, Super Mario RPG, you are picking what characters you want to make part of your team, choosing what to do with their ability points and stuff like that. So it is a true RPG in my eyes, and it's fucking amazing. It's my favorite RPG above the Final Fantasy series on the Super Nintendo. Why? Because it's just so perfect. It's like in the middle. It has just enough difficulty that makes you have to figure out what you need to do. It's not just like... Because in Final Fantasy, you can level yourself up to a certain degree and then just you know, steamroll everything. Which, I mean, you can do in Super Mario RPG, but not really. It would take you so many hours because of the way they have it set up that it's just a waste of your time. It's better to learn the strategies, and it's just fun. It's, it has a, a light-heartedness to it. It's very cartoony, it's very fun. Mario's, you know, they, they don't use words, you know, they don't speak, so it's all, like, mind stuff. But it's actually really cool, and I, I just love it. I love the storyline. The level design is just fantastic. The, the controls are perfect. Um, I like the turn-based system. Um, the, I like the simplicity of the numbers. Like, Final Fantasy gets into, like, 10,000 damage like 10,000 dude like Mario you get like a hundred damage and see I think that's so much more fun Like it's just it, there's no point in 10,000 hundreds are perfect You know like I did 120 damage you feel accomplished and you get, Once you hit over a thousand damage in Final Fantasy you're like yeah, okay I'm doing thousand you know it loses that that feeling so that's why I love Super Mario RPG It's just like the perfect amount of everything that's not too crazy, it, what, you know, noobs and plebs can get into it, you know, I, and I love games like that. I love games that just, they know what they're doing with the genre, and they do it right, and they do it fairly, and they do it to a degree that you don't get bored, but at the same time, you don't get frustrated. Super Mario RPG is the perfect blend of all RPG elements, and I absolutely love it. That's, that again, that might be, that's going to be the second favorite game that's on there. You know, obviously Legend of Zelda, hands down, gets it. Oh my god, Anna Managuchi. I've seen these guys live. Fucking fantastic. Just had to point that out. But anyway, Super Mario RPG, thumbs up all the way. Booyah. Okay, so now we got Super Mario World. 
we'll, we'll, we'll break them up. Super Mario World, uh, I won't spend too much time on because you guys know it. It's an amazing game. You had to put it on there, and I'm glad they did. Uh, what else can you say about it? Super Mario World, it's great. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. The game that everyone forgets that it's actually Super Mario World 2. But very fair thing to forget because it looks nothing like it. But that's what makes it so amazing. Yoshi's Island is fantastic. I love that game. To this day, I still go back and play it all the time. I love it. It's a great game. Awesome platformer. Uh, the music is probably one of my favorite things in it. The level design and character design is by far the number one thing that uh, draws people to that game. You watch gameplay of it, you see screenshots, and it just draws you in. You're like, wow, I really love the art style that they did here. It was so different from Super Mario World 1. It's so different from just everything else. Even to this day, it has, like, it's not a nostalgic thing. It's it's an arts thing. Like, it just, no game really captures the art style of Yoshi's Island to this day. You know, they, they've tried to make, like, 64 versions and uh, another version. It's just, it's just not the same. There's just something about that game specifically in itself that just makes it so perfect and it's i don't want to say it's better than super mario world one because they're two different games but if i had to choose which one i would probably pick yoshi's island if i only had one game because it's just so much different you know mario's basic platform it's a great game don't get me wrong but yoshi's island introduced so many new mechanics so many different uh level features and designs and just it was just an amazing game all around so so different from everything else and that's why i would pick it Okay, so we got Super Metroid at the end. Holy shit, Super Metroid, right? Dude, Super freaking Metroid. What can you say about this game other than just beautiful, absolutely beautiful game? Uh, just the feeling you get when you play Super Metroid. It's like, gosh, it's, I don't know how to describe it. Like, here, if you ever play Super Metroid for the first time, which is probably most of you not, even if it's not your first time, do this. Have all the lights out all the lights out just the glow of your screen have nothing else don't don't touch your phones don't have music playing no just let the ambience of the game de like just en engulf you and develop just ugh, it just sucks you in dude you just you're just part of this world and like the the soundtrack is amazing which is metroid is known for the original metroid did it perfectly too but I think Super Metroid did it better. Just that the sounds and everything. There's like, I mean, there's a soundtrack, but most of it's just like ambient music. And it just sucks you in. And you just feel like you're really like trapped on this planet and you need to get the fuck out. And just the level design is amazing. Like the first Metroid was very confusing because there was no map. You know, this one gives you a map now. And that that's that right there is the key factor in Super Metroid is the map system. Because to me, it's the same game. It's the same game as the first Metroid, just done better, obviously. But the map system and the save features and all of that make it so much better. So, I mean, you have to play this game. If you guys have not played this game, you got to. It's so good. Like, I think anyone who likes retro video games would like Super Metroid. That, like, you, you know, you can go into, like, even why people wouldn't like maybe Star Fox or Super Mario Kart or Super Mario RPG, you know? There's reasons. But Super Metroid has literally everything. Puzzle solving, platforming, you know, just like every, there's like just a little bit of everything. Even like RPG, you know, you level up your shit. Uh, you know, it has little elements of everything in there. And you just, you can't deny how amazing it is. Okay. But that ends the list of games that are on every mini NES. So now we're going to go into the ones. Oh, what's up, Anarchy? Uh, we're going to go into the titles that were just on uh, the Western SNES version, which is here in America. So, there's only six of them, uh, or five of them, sorry, uh, but looking over the two lists, I'm kind of glad that we got these instead of their list, but we'll go over that later. Okay, so Earthbound. Holy shit, Earthbound. Now, I like Earthbound, but I think people give it a little too much credit. I mean, yes, it's fun. It's different. It's, I mean, its art style is just unique as shit. Uh, the character designs are fun. I mean, everything about the game is absolutely amazing. And, I mean, I liked it, but at the same time, it's not a game that I'll go back and play. You know, like, it, it, it was fun to go through once. Amazing game to go through. And you're like, oh, cool. Uh, but, Earth, I, don't, I mean, like, I love Earthbound. It should, thumbs up. It's on the list. I love it. I'm glad it's there. Especially because it's like a $150 fucking game. Like, I don't own a copy. I'm not going to spend 150 bucks on a Super Nintendo game. So it's really cool because you can spend however much this thing costs, what, 80 bucks? And boom, you got Earthbound. So that's pretty sweet. 
Uh, so I'm glad that it's on there for literally that reason. I think that would be the, my main reason why I'm glad Earthbound's on that mini SNES. Other than that, I, I just, I'm not that big of an Earthbound fan. I think there's much better RPGs, even on this one. You got Super Mario RPG, you got, oh uh, I mean, yeah, we can even throw Legend of Zelda in there, you got Final Fantasy VI, I mean, shit, dude. Play those. I, I, I mean, I would play through Earthbound, because you know you can, but I, you know, I, I'd spend more of your time on the other ones, honestly. Um, okay, Kirby's Dream Course. Love Kirby's Dream Course. How many times have you guys seen us, me and my friends play that game on this channel? It is such a great co-op game. Like, it's essentially, it's like putt-putt mini-golf, but you get power-ups and you get stars and uh, there's all these weird courses and you can jump and you can, uh, dude, it's just, it's such a fun game. Uh, it's probably one of the most fun games ever made. I'll, I'll even throw it on that list. Like, top 10 just fun games. Not games, not the best games. Not, you know, I'm not, not breaking it down that way. Just saying, like, the games where every time you put it in, you're gonna have a good time. Every time you play it, it's gonna be fun. Like, one of those games is just awesome. Um, and yeah, see, even Anarchy agrees with me that you got bored with Earthbound. Yeah, you get bored with it. Um, but Kirby's Dream Course, two thumbs up co-op game one of the best co-op games i think that's why you always see us playing it it's so much fun to like battle over stars and, and fuck with each other and it's such a good game i, I think that's probably one of the, i'm gonna place that as the number three game on our version of the mini snes because it's just so perfect of a game it's always so much fun you know and if you have friends there that's going to be the game that once you start playing if you've never played it before you're going to be hooked it's so fun so you're probably going to get the most play out of that game for sure um, okay, so now we got Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Hyper Fighting. I'm not sure why they picked this version of Street Fighter 2. I mean, I understand they want, you know, the, the full character roster, but I don't think this is the best Super, or sorry, the best Street Fighter game that they could have picked. I mean, obviously there's what, like 20 it seems? Like there were so many Street Fighters that came out on Super Nintendo, but I mean, I, mean, I and I don't even know what I would think would be the best. Maybe just Street Fighter 2. I don't know. I don't, but I just don't think that one's the best. If I'm, if I'm thinking of the right one, because um, I think that one had a, a lot of flaws and like it, it, the characters weren't real, uh, like balanced. You know, like there was actual characters that were just way better to always pick. So I think they could have picked a more balanced overall game. That I, I know they went for it, so you have like as many characters to choose from. That's what they were going for, I'm sure. But I think that was maybe a bad decision. Good game, though. I mean, it's fun to, at least to have a fighting game on there. That's the first and only fighting game. I would have much rather have seen, like, Killer Instinct, to be honest. Uh, not necessarily Clay Fighter. Uh, Balls 3D. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, like, really bad fighting. I, I, Killer Instinct would have been a better choice than that. And I know people are going to give me some shit for that, for sure. Um, but, and I'm not saying I like Killer Instinct more than Street Fighter. Because they're kind of, to me, they're kind of level. Again, I did. I, I won a tournament playing Killer Instinct, so there's a little bit of an extra, you know, love for it personally. But I don't know. I just I just oh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. Just that I would have picked Killer Instinct over that specific game. If you had just put in Street Fighter 2, I think that would have just won. Just straight up Street Fighter 2. Just give me the original cast, the cool game. You know, I just think that would have been a better pick for this. Uh, Super Punch Out, cool game. I mean. I like I like the original Punch Out way better than Super Punch Out. I think Super Punch Out they tried too much shit. Like I don't like that like you see through Mac. I like to be able to see Mac, see what I'm doing. I don't like that like half the opponents covered by me and like it confuses me personally. My opinion is I don't like Super Punch Out. It's a fun game. I just don't like it. I think there's too much going on. Uh, I think it lost the fun of. I mean like because when you play Punch Out you don't watch. Mac for the most. You watch the opponent. You just know he's there. He's not blocking any of the screen. Like how many games have you played where something in the foreground blocks what's going on? Like in like Battle Toads is a good example. You know, uh, you know, like uh, just all any game where there's something in in the foreground. You're like, oh shit. You know, now you can't see your character. That's how I feel about Super Punch Out. And I mean, I'm sure there's people that agree with me, but I'm sure there's plenty more that don't. I just don't think that should have been on there, to be honest. I don't think that was that iconic of a game. Um, yeah, and see, even guys in the chat, like, never got good at it. Yeah, it was hard to get good at it. It was one of those things that, like, you had to want to get good at it. Like, you had to, like, sit down and go, okay, I'm gonna get into this shit. I'm gonna get past all the, the crap that I have to deal with that everyone else hates about it. I'm gonna sit there and learn this game and be good. 
And, I mean, obviously that's what it takes for any game, but I just think certain games like that one, it's just not worth their time. Because no, I don't think that many people cared about Super Punch-Out. You know, like, people love the original Punch-Out. In fact, to this day, the 16-bit arcade has my initials as the top score. Thank you, all But... Super Punch Out, and I, I think they could have put some other games on there. I know why they did. Obviously, Punch Out's a big name, so let's put it on there. But there's there's better games. I think, and see, and that ends the titles that were on the uh, Western version. And there's, I think they could have put a sports game on there. I think like even like, like Ken Griffey Jr.'s Major League Baseball is amazing, you know, like or just something fun. I think they should have replaced Punch Out with another sports game. So, that's my opinion, though, but that's why you're listening to me, right? Uh, so now we're going to go through the five games that were exclusive to the Japanese uh, Super Famicom. Uh, so now, a lot of these games we've never played. I've played, I don't know what they are, but I've played a lot of Famicom, Super Famicom games, so I might be able to give you a little bit of insight on them. Uh, Fire, Fire Emblem, Mystery of the Emblem. Uh, Fire Emblems are games I've seen a lot of gameplay of. I personally never played them. Uh, I had so many RPGs that I like to play over and over. I just haven't got into yet that I just don't want to start Fire Emblem. Like, um, I started Lufia 2 a while ago because I got a copy of it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. But, like, Fire Emblem, they, they just charge you way too much for them. Like, you go to try to find a cart on Fire Emblem, it's just, like, inflated price. Like, like holy shit. Uh, so... I never got into them, but I can see why some did. It has a really unique fighting style. Um, you know, like I'm not. I think that's the one where they had character deaths. Like I said, I'm not sure, but Fire Emblem is known for like their perma deaths. Like, you die, you die, and I'm. Not, I I hate that shit. Like I'm playing a fucking video game. If I wanted to die in real life, I'd go out there and do something and take the risk. I don't want that risk in a video game. You know, like no, I don't want to perma die. It's so dumb. So, you know, like, again, I'm not saying Fire Emblem Mystery the Emblem for itself is a bad game. I'm just not into the Fire Emblem series. I think they, they should have gone with a Lufia game. In fact, Lufia 2 would have been great. Uh, but, you know, they chose that. Uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja is a great game. I have played that one. <laughs> not all the way through, but it's a co-op game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's... Uh, I forget the guy's name. Is it Nobunagu or something? But it's 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 Chinese lore uh, where they, you know it's it's kind of like the Pied Piper or you know or like you know Peter Piper you know like all these like lores of like our characters like in Mother Goose rhymes and stuff. Well, the Legend of the Mystical Ninja is about one of those guys in, in but in China. Uh, so it's a game based off something like that. Uh, it's it's kind of like a level up system, very small. It's not RPG, but. It's, you know, it's like, it's a scrolling platformer. It's pretty, not even a platformer, I'm sorry. It's just like a, it's like a beat-em-up almost, you know? Uh, but it's really fun. The controls are good. Uh, it's hard. It's very hard. Uh, it's one of those games that shit's constantly coming at you from both ends, and you have to figure out which way to go, and it, it's, it's weird. Uh, Gunbari Goemon, yeah, or Goemon, yeah, that guy. Uh, yes, thank you, Anthony, for that, but that, that's who it is. Uh, most people say they love the Mystical Ninja series, and it, it's, it's fun games. They're hard as shit, I mean, Famicom, hard as shit, especially when you get into the co-op shit, but it's worth, that's one of the games that's worth your time, and I think that's a really cool addition to theirs. Uh, I would give that one thumbs up for sure, that's a great game to put on theirs. Uh, okay, this one's called Penal de Pun, or... I don't know, it's like P-A-N-E-L-D-E-P-O-N. Um, this game, I have no idea what it's about from the title. Like, I'm clicking on it now. Oh, it's Tetris Attack. Oh, well, shit. Dude, I wish we got that game. Tetris Attack is amazing. Um, okay, well, for those who don't know, Tetris Attack. Uh, it was, I think, I want to say it was the first co-op Tetris game on a console. Like, I know they had one for the handheld. Like, you know, you can plug Game Boys and play against each other. But I think this was, like, the first one... Well, on the system, you know, that you can play against someone else on the same screen. And, like, in the sense that, like, what you did affected them. Like, the old school Game Boy. Like, if you got, like, a Tetris, it would affect the other person's thing. Like, this had that aspect, but it had, had the, ca the characteristics of characters that, you like, added special ability. Yeah, I mean, it was just a really cool Tetris game. To this day, people still play Tetris Attack. And, um, that's a really good game. That, that's... I, that's one, okay, take out Super Punch-Out, give us Tetris Attack all day, you know, um, and yes, it is different than Tetris 2, Tetris 2 is, I hate Tetris 2, I think Tetris 2 is the worst Tetris game ever made, completely different games, trust me, try Tetris Attack, fuck Tetris 2, Tetris Attack, all the way, 
So Super Soccer, I mean, I've, I've played, played so many soccer games. I'm, I, I'll, I'll, I'll click on it just to see, like, exactly. Maybe it'll give, like, a screenshot of what this one is. But, I mean, Soccer, Soccer. I, oh, that's, okay, yeah. I didn't Along like this game. I, uh, I, I, this is the one that's real illness. weird. Uh, and with like, you only see part of the field at a time, depending who you place. pick. And uh, I just, I don't know. There's, I, I don't know what's a better Our soccer game. I don't you now. really play soccer games. I never really liked it. But, I mean, in the rest of the world, soccer is huge. Or football, sorry. Football in the rest of the world is huge. So I understand why they put it on there. At least they got a sports game. We got Super Punch Out. Yay. Uh, I, but I guess I'd take Super Punch-Out over Super Soccer, so I'll give it that. Okay, then see, look, Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 2, the new Challengers. We should have got that game. That one's way better. Way better than Hyper Fighting. Dude, see, okay, so now they got it right. Super Street Fighter, new Challengers, thumbs up in my opinion. Way better game than Hyper Fighting. So I don't know why they gave a different Street Fighter to us. I'm sure they have their reasons. They always do. It's Nintendo. But yeah, they also they got they got the better one for sure. So okay, so my overall opinion on the SNES Classic Mini is what a deal. Like okay, like the, the NES Mini was awesome. I mean, I get it. I like the whole idea. But like the library of games was good. It was good, but it didn't have games that like would break the bank, you know, like most of the games that are on that system, like there, there was no like Little Samson's or Dinosaur Peak, these games that are worth like a shit ton of money, whereas like on this one, you're getting your money's worth, if you see it for that value, you know, obviously I'm a game collector, most of you probably are as well, so you have most of the games that are on these minis, but like, th this SNES one, there's no way you have like Earthbound and shit, you know, like, these are expensive games. Like, if you were to add up all the games, the value, I would bet it, it's about 500 bucks easily. You know, so you're getting like 500 bucks worth of games, if not more, for, you know, $8 price tag. Whereas, like, the, the NES Mini, it wouldn't come any, it'd come like maybe 200 bucks in games. You know, like, it's just, it's, it's easier to put a library of games together from the NES Mini, but it's really hard to get this library of games. So, to give this specific library to you for 80 bucks, that's fucking amazing. Um, so this one's definitely worth your value. I mean, this is worth every penny. Uh, I wouldn't say, like, I wouldn't go for a scalper or nothing, but really worth your time. Uh, these minis are really cool. I think these minis are way better, though, for people who are um, not collectors. Obviously, like, if you have 80 bucks to spend, I would say get a, get a Super Nintendo. Like, I would, I would much rather see people actually get the original hardware and, like, one game. You know, because you can get it. You can get a Super Nintendo for like 50 bucks, okay, and then get like one or two games that you like and start there. Except for getting a mini that you can't add anything to. You know, like you're stuck with these games. If you want to try something else, you're screwed. You got to start anyways. So it's like, why don't you just start with the actual system so you can play endless amount of games anywhere? You know. So I would always recommend just getting the original hardware or getting you know something that plays the games. You know, they got all these boxes out there like the Retrons and stuff. Get one of those. Get a Retron first before you get these minis. But these minis are pretty cool. Um, this one for sure is really worth your money. And the games, the games list is, is phenomenal. There's only two games on there I wouldn't want to play. So that's awesome. Like that, the NES mini, there's a lot of them I was like, yeah, I probably would never play that game. This one, there's only two. There's only two games that I wouldn't play on there. So I would say just pick this one up for sure. Uh, Again, though, just go with the original hardware. I'm going to keep saying that because why limit? Why limit? If you're going to play games, if you're a gamer and you're going to play games, do not limit yourself to plug and plays. So that's essentially what this is. It's a fancy-ass plug and play. And that's going to kill you. That's going to kill your mood. So you're like, someone else is going to mention, oh, you got to play this game. I can't. You know, like, you don't want to say that. You want to be like, okay, if I find it, I'll pick it up or let me borrow it. You know, like... You're just closing doors on everything else because there's so many good Super Nintendo games out there that you don't you shouldn't have to limit yourself to like these 25 or whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, as it, the classic, boom, good deal, thumbs up all the way. Get that. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that we got to talk about some publications. We got to talk about the SNES Mini Classic. Um, that's all I'm gonna give you today. I usually do about an hour, and I knew that those two topics would take the hour. So. Uh, uh, thanks for joining me on the uh, second, uh, what would you call this, a podcast? I don't know, I call it a podcast, but we'll say the second episode of the podcast. 
Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any other topics, by all means, put them into the chat or the if you're watching on YouTube, the comment section. I love to answer questions. Uh, obviously, the, the more that this expands and people start watching, I'll get more and more user questions. I will answer them all. Um, obviously, there's like a thousand questions, no, but I will get to everything I can. Um, I love that you guys can participate with me. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, check me out on Twitch. Uh, I'll have the links below. Just go to the Twitch link and watch this live. So uh, we had some people commenting as I've been explaining. That's, that's been the banter bit. Uh, back and forth. So if you want to be part of that, you can come watch it live on Twitch. It's a great time. Uh, also then, if you like retro gaming or just gaming in general, it's a fun channel. Ask, ask, ask the regulars here. I hear you guys. Anarchy, Para, I see you out there. Charlie, everyone knows Charlie. Uh, <laughs> so uh, come out and hang out. It's a fun time. Uh, watch these live. It's a lot more fun because you can participate in the conversation. And the more I, people I have uh, chatting, I, I think I'm going to have more interaction. Like right now, it's more like me speaking to the camera because there's not too many people that watch it live. But if I can get a nice uh, you know, group of people coming in and, and participating, I'll come up with topics that we can debate live on here. And that'll bring a whole new element to this podcast that I don't see very often. So I, I want to try to get that rolling. So if you know someone who would enjoy this kind of content, please give them links, you know, saying, hey, check this guy out. I, I really appreciate it. And again, if you have any other ideas for uh, any other topics, let me know. They don't have to be current. They don't have to be what's new. It can just be about anything. Anything you want to hear me talk about. Anything you want my expertise or knowledge on. Or just anything in general. Uh, obviously then, if you have something to say about anything I've said in this, go ahead and start uh, a thread in the comments. I love when people start uh, threads. I don't even care if you guys bitch at each other. But just please, I, I like to have peace and tranquility on my channel. Uh, so just keep it clean. Don't be, don't call people names. Just you know, disagree, but be respectable adults about it, please. So that's gonna end it. Uh, thanks again for joining me. The links are below if you want to check out any of my other stuff. Follow me on Twitter. Um, I don't know. You guys know how to do the like subscribe thing. This isn't your first rodeo. So do all that shit. Until next time, guys. Peace.